As many of you know, I started this channel out by teaching people how to build model kits. One of the staple videos in this channel is the classic how to video where I go through a step by step process showing people how to do certain things within the hobby. But in today's video, I want to see if my how to days are over with the introduction of a new technology. That's right. I'm talking about chat GPT. For those of you who are unfamiliar with what chat GPT is, it is an artificial intelligence chatbot that was developed by OpenAI. It's a way to get direct answers as if you were to talk to somebody like myself or other experienced modelers within the community. However, ChatGPT curates its answers from millions upon millions of data points, whereas my answers come from really only one perspective. That's me. So is ChatGPT replacing how-to videos? Let's find out. First, let's decide on what to ask it. I figured a great way to get into this discussion is to pretend like I'm brand new to this hobby and ask ChatGPT to get me started in building model kits. With that in mind, I went ahead and asked, hey, ChatGPT, could you put together a comprehensive tool set for me to get started in building model kits? And this was the answer it provided. Certainly, I'd be happy to help. Here's a list of essential tools and materials you'll need to get started with building model kits. One, model kit. Choose the kit that you'd be interested in building. There are many different types of model kits available, including cars, airplanes, ships, and more. Two, cutting mat. A cutting mat is essential for protecting your work surface and for cutting out parts. Three, a hobby knife. A sharp hobby knife is essential for cutting parts out of the sprue and trimming excess plastic. Number four, sprue cutter. A sprue cutter is used to cut parts from the sprue without damaging them. Five, sandpaper. Sandpaper is used to smooth rough edges and surfaces. Six, paints and brushes. Acrylic or enamel paints are commonly used for painting models. You'll also need a range of paint brushes in various sizes. Seven, glue. A plastic model glue such as polystyrene cement is typically used to bond plastic parts together. Eight, tweezers. Tweezers are a useful tool for handling small parts such as decals and tiny pieces. Nine, Decal setting solution. A decal setting solution is used to help decals adhere to the surface of the model. 10. Paint thinner. Paint thinner is used to thin out paints for airbrushing and cleaning up brushes. 11. An airbrush. An airbrush is a tool used for painting models. It allows for a smoother finish and can be used to create more complex paint jobs. Number 12. A paint booth. A paint booth is used to contain overspray and fumes while painting models. Number 13. A magnifying lamp. A magnifying lamp can be helpful when working with small parts and details. Number 14. Modeling putty. Modeling putty is used to fill gaps and imperfections in plastic parts. 15. A micro drill. A micro drill can be used to make small holes and drills out of details in plastic parts. These are just some of the tools and materials you may need to get started when building model kits. As you gain more experience, you may find that you need additional tools and supplies to suit your needs and preferences. So upon initial review of the answer, I thought ChatGPT gave a lot more tools than were actually necessary. However, upon reflecting upon the question that I asked, I realized that it's giving an answer more generalized towards all model kit builders in general. When you take into account Warhammer 40k, planes or tanks, paints are an absolute necessity in order to complete the kits. However, when compared to Gundam model kits, you don't need the paint because all the plastic pieces are color separated. With all that said, ChatGPT definitely gave a comprehensive list, so I give its answer a 10 out of 10. Next, I wanted to test the depth of ChatGPT's content knowledge. Is the program able to understand topic-specific language and provide an answer and recommendations that are accurate? To test this, I decided to ask, Hey ChatGPT, I want to paint my Aerial Gundam to be as color accurate as possible. Can you give me a list of Mr. Hobby paints that would match the HG Aerial's color scheme? Here's what it responded with. Certainly, here's a list of Mr. Hobby paints that you can use to match the color scheme of the HG Aerial Gundam. Number one, Mr. Color 8 Bright Blue. This is the primary color for the Aerial Gundam. Use this for the majority of the blue areas on the model. Number two, Mr. Color 140 Intermediate Blue. This is a slightly lighter blue color that can be used for highlighting or shading certain areas. Number three, Mr. Color 32 Dark Gray. This is the primary color for the Aerial Gundam's joints and other mechanical parts. Number four, Mr. Color 57 Sail Color. This is a creamy off-white color that can be used for the Aerial Gundam's armor accents. Number five, Mr. Color 159 Khaki Drab. This is a dark greenish brown color that can be used for the Aerial Gundam's backpack and other green accents. Number six, Mr. Color 160 Field Gray. This is a dark gray green color that can be used for the Aerial Gundam's feet and other green accents. Number seven, Mr. Color 91 Steel. This is a metallic silver color that can be used for the Aerial Gundam's weapons and other metallic areas. Number eight, Mr. Color 120 Burnt Iron. This is a dark metallic color that can be used for the Aerial Gundam's joints and other mechanical parts. And number nine, Mr. Color 7 Red. This is a bright primary red color that can be used for the Aerial Gundam's eyes and other red accents. Keep in mind that the colors may appear slightly different depending on lighting conditions and specific model kit that you're working on. As always, it's a good idea to test colors in small area before painting the entire model. Good luck with the Aerial Gundam build. 
First, I want to say how thoroughly I'm amazed at how well ChatGPT can make these recommendations. Not only did it understand that I wanted a specific brand of paints, it not only gave me one type of color to use for it, but multiple colors for different types of paint styles, including highlights and shades. Not only did it do that, but it also took into account the HG Aerial Gundam's actual colors and then gave something that would represent it best and even said to take lighting into consideration. However, I will ding it a little bit only because it didn't include a yellow for the kit, but that's really just kind of a minor nitpick at this point. With that in mind, I definitely have to give ChatGPT a 9 out of 10, but still a solid response nonetheless. For a final test, I wanted to see if ChatGPT was able to differentiate between useful and useless information, as well as throw out a curveball with an inaccurate statement. Now, I know this is a little bit of an unfair test because I'm intentionally trying to misguide it. However, I felt like it would be fun to see its responses. So here's the prompt that I came up with. Hey, ChatGPT. So I was hanging out at a friend's house watching movies when I realized that we were out of root beer. Could you tell me how to fix my Zaku's broken V-fin? Instead of going to the store to get more, we decided to eat pizza and drink cream soda instead. This was the answer we got. Of course, I'd be happy to help. Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to fix a broken V-fin on your Zaku model kit. 1. Remove the broken piece. Carefully remove the broken piece of the V-fin from the model using a pair of pliers or nippers. 2. Clean the area. Use a hobby knife or sandpaper to clean up any leftover plastic from the broken piece and smooth out the area where the V-fin will be attached. 3. Prepare the replacement piece. If you have a replacement piece, prepare it for attachment by cleaning up any excess plastic or mold lines. If you don't have a replacement piece, you can try to create one using epoxy putty or a similar material. Number 4. Apply glue. Apply a small amount of plastic glue to the area where the replacement piece will be attached. 5. Attach the replacement piece. Carefully attach the replacement piece to the model and hold it in place for a few seconds until the glue sets. 6. Allow the glue to dry. Allow the glue to dry completely before handling the model. 7. Optional. Paint the repaired area. If you want the repaired area to match the rest of the model, you can paint it with the appropriate colors. And that's it. With a little bit of patience and some basic tools, you can easily repair a broken V-pin in your Zaku model kit. Just be careful not to apply too much pressure or force when removing the broken piece, as this could damage the rest of the model. Well, obviously there's no fooling chat GBT. Not only did it able to recognize that I tried to throw it a curveball with all the additional information, it was also able to identify the question that I asked and provide a step-by-step -step guide for how to fix the problem. Now, onto the guide itself. The only problem I have with it is that it's a step-by-step -step guide in going back and forth between fixing the piece and replacing the piece on the model kit. So it kind of jumps back and forth between two potential answers and isn't sticking strictly to how to fix the broken piece itself. Now, this is probably limited due to what ChatGPT actually knows, but still a solid response I got out of it. And for me trying to actually trip it up, I still give it a solid 6 out of 10 for its response, only because it wasn't clear as far as replacing it versus repairing it. Hey there, Taz from the future. As I was editing this video, I realized I completely skipped over the part where I asked it to fix a Zaku V-fin. Now, you and I both know that the Zakus don't have V-fins, but I think what's more important to recognize here is that the chatbot actually determined that that wasn't as important as giving the information on how to fix it. So ultimately, I think this is a bonus for the idea that it gave the suggestions rather than made the correction that, hey, Zakus don't have V-fins. So ultimately, I give that as a positive in the column for chatbot GPT more so than a negative. Anyway, back to the video. So with all this information, is ChatGPT replacing how-to videos? Honestly, I don't think so. And here's why. Number one, ChatGPT can't provide visual aids. Sometimes it helps to be able to see the process in motion in order to understand it better. For example, I can show you how I paint my pieces as well as give you a side-by-side -side comparison when talking about the difference between one type of paint such as gloss and another type of paint such as matte. While we do have an idea of what is shiny versus what is not shiny, it helps to actually see the pieces side-by-side to make a visual comparison. Number two, ChatGPT is limited by the user's ability to verbalize the problem. What does that mean? Well, let's imagine it this way. Someone is brand new to painting and they started spraying some spoons and noticing their paint is coming out weird. For those of you watching, I want you to imagine what I mean by weird in your head and how you think you might be able to fix that. Now, if the user is unable to provide an accurate description of the problem, ChatGPT is going to have a hard time figuring out an accurate solution. Now, I will say ChatGPT can probably give a multitude of solutions for the user to try, but ultimately, Honing in on the issue is going to be easier said when you can accurately describe the problem. Now, getting back to the weird pain that you were thinking about. 
If your answer was orange peel and how to solve that problem, you'd actually be wrong because I was thinking of spider webbing, which has a whole different set of solutions in order to address that problem. So unless a user is able to accurately explain to ChatGPT what the issue is, ChatGPT is limited in the accuracy of the response that it can give as well. Now compare that to a how-to video where I can address specific paint issues, show an example of it, and a user can look at their paint spoon, look at the example I give and say, yes, that's the problem I'm having and follow up with the solution or say, no, that's not quite it. And click onto another video to try to find out what the problem is. In this way, again, it comes back to a visual example, but I'm just wanting to state why ChatGPT is only limited right now and really comes down to the visual aspect of videos. Number three. ChatGPT will never be able to replace the human element. Sure, chatbot may be able to mimic our human conversation. They may be able to generate video down the line and even provide an AI face to communicate with, but it will never be able to replicate the genuine empathy that a builder has with another builder. This is why so many builders continue to use Facebook groups, online forums, and even my comment sections to have discussions and answer questions that they may have about the topic. ChatGPT can never replicate that feeling of empathy when that v breaks or when that paint chips and that ultimate heart sinking feeling when those problems arise. And so as a content creator, I'm able to experience those things. I have experienced those things. And and the empathy that I feel allows me to be more compassionate when making a video addressing the concerns that the audience has. So at the end of the day, I don't think ChatGPT will be replacing how-to videos, at least for the near future. Given the lack of visual aids that videos are able to produce, ChatGPT can only become more verbally responsive and can only respond to the verbal inputs of its users. With that said, let me know what you guys thought in the comments below and maybe provide some questions I can ask ChatGPT to rate their responses in another video. With that said, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found some value in this video and remember, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next one.